Chilling words of a dead man, a self-recorded confession by Devin Kelly from 2012. Five years later, he was the trigger man in the Sutherland Springs church massacre. Behind me is the scene of another mass shooting. 26 people dead, the shooter, Devin Kelly. Was Overnight, the quiet town of Sutherland Springs, Texas, trying to come to grips with the nation's latest horrific mass shooting. We have six ambulances in route. My son was helping him up at the church. He said there was bodies on top of bodies. and. They were having to move the bodies to see if anybody underneath was alive or breathing or anything. All of America is praying to God to help the wounded and the families of the victims. We will never, ever leave their side. All things will be revealed in the end. I'm just hoping the day, my last day, whenever that is, whatever date that is, On November 5, in 2017, at around 11 a.m., Devin Patrick Kelly's white SUV pulled into the parking lot of First Baptist Church, in Sutherland Springs, Texas. But Kelly, a douchebag from New Brownfells, wasn't there to do any worship. Quite the contrary this douchebag's motive was pure evil. It was around 11.20 that Kelly would exit the SUV donning all black tactical gear, a vest, and just a wild guess that because he probably thought it made him look extra badass, a black face mask with a white skull. Armed also with a Ruger AR-556 semi-automatic assault rifle, douchebag approached the right side of the church, where he encountered two individuals, outside, whom he shot dead on the spot. He was shooting, all you could see was him jerking like this. From the outside of the From church. the outside, he was, he was on this side, and he just started walking like a rapid walk and he just kept on shooting and went all the way around the building. It's said that after he continued fire on the building itself, Kelly entered the building from the right side entrance where a Sunday service was, as to be expected, in session. Upon coming into contact with the devout parishioners, it's reported that Kelly shouted the words, Everybody dies, motherfuckers. It's said that Kelly continued to sashay up and down the center aisle methodically taking shots at people in the pews left and right of him and pausing only to reload his weapon. I heard grunts from him as he, as he walked through. That's my perspective of what I heard. The whole affair took approximately 11 minutes long, during which it's estimated that Kelly fired approximately 700 rounds. And you were shot a total of eight times. Eight, eight miscellaneous rounds through me, yes. In the end, Kelly managed to kill a total of 26 people, including an unborn child, and wound 22 others. One of the victims that didn't make it was, perhaps not coincidentally, the grandmother of one of Kelly's ex-girlfriends. Some have surmised that Kelly's motive was spurred by anger he harbored toward this particular ex seeing that she regularly attended the church with her mother, but just happened not to be there that weekend. Was Devin Kelly a psychopath? Oh yeah, most definitely. He just had no regard for anybody else except for himself. But really, nobody knows. Kelly would eventually return to his car, and whether he'd intended to grab another weapon or else attempt to flee the scene scot-free, it was here that he would meet his match in the form of a former firearms instructor named Stephen Williford. Williford? in having heard the commotion from across the street, began to shoot at Kelly from across the street. He in fact managed to hit Kelly twice with his AR-15 one time in the leg and once in the upper left torso underneath his tactical garb. Kelly responded by firing back at Williford, all willy-nilly with his handgun, but ultimately jumped back into his Explorer and booked it out of the parking lot. Except Rogue Williford wasn't about to let the douchebag off that easily. Spotting Johnny Langendorf, a stranger, stopped at a light at the intersection nearby, Williford jumped into the passenger seat of Langendorf's vehicle and told Langendorf to follow Kelly's Ford Explorer. Langendorf was game, and a high-speed chase commenced, 
maxing out at speeds estimated at 95 miles per hour. And I noticed that there was a four-wheel drive Dodge truck, another truck, sitting at the stop sign. And a guy had watched this whole thing take place. I ran over to his truck and I said, that guy just shot up the Baptist church. We need to stop him. He opened his door and I got in. As the chase continued, Williford made sure to call 911 to inform authorities of Kelly's whereabouts, since he would evidently not still be found at the First Baptist Church. In the meantime, the suspect was slowly losing more and more blood and this was likely making it difficult for him to maneuver his own vehicle, much less lose the duo on his tail. So at the end of the day, after making a phone call of his own to his parents, informing them he'd just shot up a church, was wounded, and didn't think he'd make it, Kelly's car careened off-road, crossed over a ditch, and finally came to a stop in a field about 30 feet later. He pulled over to the side, of, like he was going to pull off to the side of the road, and he slowed down and I thought he was going to stop. And I reached down to, to, to open the door, still with my rifle in hand, and he sped up, he hit a, a road sign, it flipped over the SUV, he ran across, back up on the road, about another hundred yards down and down into the bar ditch. And Johnny stopped the truck on the road, and I told him, I said, get down, get down. He got down in the truck and I, got, I stepped out of the door and I put my rifle across the hood of the truck and, and was yelling, get out of the truck, get out of the truck, get out of the truck. And I never saw any movement or anything from, from it, but I, I wasn't going to let him go anywhere. Police that arrived on scene would find Kelly in his SUV with three gunshot wounds, the last one being a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. Well, at least 27 people have been killed after a gunman opened fire at a church in a small town near Lavernia. That shooting happened around 11.30 this morning at the First Baptist Church in Sutherland Springs. It was so rapid, rapid, and then one of the victims came running from that side, and he came running across the street this way, and he was running like this. He had blood all over his arms and his face. And we let him in, in, and he said, there's a shooter, there's a shooter. He shot everybody in there, my family's in there, my family. And he just collapsed there on the floor. Besides Kelly being described as a bit of an outcast back in school, this is a case wherein it's difficult to really pinpoint any one precise motive for what he did that Sunday in November of 2017. I think that uh, mental health is your problem here. This was a very based on preliminary reports very deranged individual a lot of problems over a long period of time we have a lot of mental health problems in our country as do other countries he was a pervert a pedophile he took her virginity while she was still in middle school he's a very disgusting person he really is even after she broke up with him he stalked her for years he said come live with me and my wife i'll take care of you as long as you'll walk around topless all the time Kelly was essentially a member of the U.S. Air Force who, by the time of the crime, had amassed quite a dark history of domestic violence allegations, as well as convictions. Among these was a conviction for an assault on his stepson, the son of an ex-wife, and he was said to often purchase animals, dogs, etc., strictly for the purpose of target practice. Former member of the U.S. Air Force, Kelly received a bad conduct discharge in 2014, and in 2012, he was court-martialed for assaulting his spouse and their child. Um, I had slapped him across the face several times, being a 20-year-old man with no experience with babies and an anger issue and, seemed, and lack of self-control. I, I smacked him across his face. You know, and takes a few seconds um, to lose control. This is not the first mistake and this is not the last mistake and there's probably plenty to come, unfortunately. He'd done a stint in a mental institution and, due to one of his DV convictions, he should not have been allowed to purchase the weapons he purchased that were used in the massacre. But a bit more on this later. Strangers who met Kelly would often describe his demeanor as creepy, angry, or frightening. 
He strikes me as one entitled douchebag who blames the world for pissing him off and that somebody, somewhere now owes him something for it. What's odd enough is that Kelly actually attended the First Baptist Church for about a month in 2014, he would stop attending abruptly though, after which his stance on religion would do a complete 180. He became very vocal atheist, for whom it wasn't enough to believe what he believed in quiet. He had to be angry about it, and hence he was known to post rants on social media about how people who believed in God were just stupid. This, and his quote-unquote jokes about wanting to shoot up a church, would cost him Facebook friends on more than one occasion. While unclear exactly how preoccupied Kelly had become with the idea of shooting up a church in the days, weeks, and months prior to the shooting, what is evident is that he did seem to be methodically stockpiling firearms, and in the end he was clearly consumed by it enough to lose his own life for carrying out this bizarre and disturbing goal. Later, it would come to surface that the reason Kelly had successfully been allowed to purchase the firearms he bought to carry out the shooting, is because the Air Force forgot to send the information to the FBI. Thus, when his background report was run, Kelly was allowed access to purchasing dangerous weapons that, due to his clearly violent state of mind, he should never have been allowed to lay a finger on. I'm all for gun owner rights, but not in cases where the person has proven themselves to be a danger to others. In conclusion, the Sutherland Springs church shooting is, as of this writing, the deadliest mass shooting in Texas history, as well as the deadliest shooting at an American place of worship. And I can't end this without a shout out to this story's two unlikely heroes, Stephen Williford and his impromptu partner, Johnny Langendorf. In so many similar instances, generally you see people freeze. They wait for someone else to make a move before they think to try and do anything themselves. Steve Williford didn't wait, nor did Langendorf hesitate. In my opinion, this world needs more people like them. Our community is a very humble community. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. Everybody helps each other. Everybody, everybody. You know, it, it just, it's devastating. That about concludes our video. Please don't forget to give it a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel if you want to be kept in the loop concerning all new uploads. I look forward to seeing you next time.